All right, you could be a brand new fly tire or you could be tying for over 30 years. It does not matter. What we're talking about in this video is the first fly you should tie. Stay tuned. The premise of this one is simple. You're getting into fly tying. Which fly should you tie first? And the reason I ask it is really simple. It's because going back 30 years, when I first learned how to tie, the fly that I tied is different than what I'm teaching students today. So what's changed? Well, first, let's take a step back. Whenever I first started getting into fly tying, there was this super popular fly called the Wooly Bugger. The color, the secret color, was olive. And that was that fly that so many people were tying at the time. So whenever I took my first fly tying class, that was the fly that I left that class with. And there was a lot of technique to that. We had a pinch wrap, we learned how to tie marabou in, we learned how to strip some material off chenille, how to wind hackle, how to put on a whip finish. I mean, there was so much stuff involved in that one fly. But most importantly, you could leave that class with that fly, put it on the end of your tippet and catch some trout or some bass or whatever. All fish seem to like the woolly bugger. Now fast forward to today. What's that first fly that you would recommend for other people? Now for me, it was simple. I teach sixth grade. That's my day job. I'm not a YouTuber as much as many people believe that I am. But instead, I'm a sixth grade regular education teacher. And I have a little fly tying class that I teach with the students every year. And guess which fly I love to teach them. That, seriously, pause the video right now. Go down below in the comment section. Take a guess before I tell you my answer. All right, you better have paused it because my answer is a simple one. It's the mop fly. I know, I'm sorry. I know many of you are probably yelling at the screen right now, not the mop fly, but let's be honest. I'm teaching 11 and 12 year olds. It is really simple on how to teach them how to tie a mop fly. I mean, we got a little bit of thread, some super glue. We have the mop itself, maybe a little bit of dubbing, a slotted bead on a jig hook. And most importantly, I'm gonna take these kids fishing and they're gonna catch a fish on that mop fly. And that's what really matters to me. Now, should I be teaching something else? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But I can tell you in my newest book, Fly Tying for Everyone, guess what fly I included for everyone to learn how to tie? The mop fly. I think I might be the first author in fly tying to actually have the mop fly in a book. I think that's something to be proud of, right? <laughs> but seriously, now this is where all of you are gonna come in. So I went from the olive woolly bugger to the mop fly. There's a bunch of flies in between because many people reach out to me on a regular basis and they say, hey, I'm just getting into fly tying, Tim. What fly should I really just get out there and start tying? And I tell them to pump the brakes a bit because it's not just about tying a specific fly. I also ask them some questions. Hey, where do you live? What species of fish are you fishing for? I wanna find out a little bit more about that person. Because if I'm telling someone who fishes you know, salt water versus we'll say warm water ponds in Illinois, those are going to be two completely different flies. So we have to take all of those factors into consideration. Now, whenever you know, my mind goes to the first fly, I'm thinking of you know, trout or a pond with bass and bluegills. Yeah, am I gonna tell you all the woolly bugger? Yes. Will I tell you the mop fly? Yes. Will I tell you the clouser minnow? Yes. Those are three great patterns. But here's another idea. Think about where you're going to go fly fishing with this fly. Pause for a moment and say, is there a fly shop close by? And if there is, go over to that fly shop, shoot them an email, shoot them a DM on Instagram, do whatever you can, but get into contact with someone who fishes in your area and ask them, hey, what are the three most popular flies that you fish with that are easy to tie? That's where you should start. Because at the end of the day, it's great to have this creation that you tied yourself and, and all of that fun stuff, but you also wanna learn how to tie flies that catch fish. Because there's nothing worse than getting on the water and not having any success with that first fly. Which brings me to my last point of this video. Once you're done tying your first fly, stop right there. Grab a Ziploc baggie or something, take that fly, put it away. Do not fish that fly, please. There is just something really cool to be able to say, this is my first fly that I tied however many years ago. I still have some of my flies that I tied whenever I was 10 years old. I will never use those flies. And it's so cool to look back and see those creations that I made then and what I'm tying now, just to kind of experience my own journey and, and make me just reflect about just all the great things that have happened along the way. So I encourage all of you to do the same. All right, before I wrap this one up, thank you so much for all the subscribes, for turning the notifications on, and all that crazy stuff. If you haven't done it yet, please consider doing so, but I truly appreciate all the support. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, you can check them out at Trout and Feather. 
www.troutandfeather.com. If you are into social media, you can find Trout and Feather on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, a, a, just a whole host of places. I have all my social media links down below in the description of this video. If you have any questions, my email address should be popping up on the screen right now. It's tkamisa at gmail.com. If you have any thoughts about that first fly others should be tying, by all means, please share them down below. I'm looking forward to reading and responding to all of your comments. One more time, thank you everyone for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing many of you soon.